Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Happy Monday. Exciting season, exciting time for indeed. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So good morning, Brother Daniel. Good morning, Rob Pixley. So we are in a good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Janine. Indeed, another beautiful time to be plugged into the vine, to be working on our relationship with our Heavenly Father. This week, as we start a new week, we are going to focus. We're going to share the focus on what the Lord has called us to do. Good morning, Ruth. And that is the blessing, the great commission. This week, we're going to focus on disciples. Now, the church, the building of the church has done a great job of creating a place where we could come together and fellowship, Brother Daniel. Um, and this is a great thing. You know, religion is a great thing. It can often lead you to a relationship, but it sometimes can also block you from a relationship. Um, and it depends. It depends on the structure. Good morning, Liliana. So, what we're going to focus on this week is the fact that we want to work on not only our relationship here, but our relationship here. So, as we come into election season in a few different areas of our globe, definitely in the United States, Israel. I believe Israel is like in their, I don't know, I think it's their eighth election in a few years. Very strange. There's a, a power struggle going on there. But nonetheless, remember, it is the Lord who lifts up kings and puts them down. So, if something, if someone isn't in accordance with the Lord's will, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but he will move them. Because it is he who it puts the power. It's he who puts the princes. It's he who picks up the presidents. It's he who picks up the prime ministers. It is solely our job to pray for whoever is in power during that season. And our prayer as believers should be that they are listening to wise and godly counsel, making kingdom decisions, although they are making an, an earthly place. Good morning, Mama. So, today, what I want to make sure we focus on is we're not waiting on a move of God. We are the move of God. So, Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. That's Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the 11 disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, now mind you, this is when he's already resurrected. So here he is, back from the dead, and he sent for them and said, go meet me on the mountain. Remember the old song, go tell it on the mountain. But when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some of them doubted. So they're sitting there looking right at him. And they were like, I don't know about this. So some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So with things that are swirling all around our, word, our world globally, it is easy to say, whether you're a believer or non-believers, eternity is set on the hearts of all men and women. And I believe during this season that our Heavenly Father is calling out for many of those. So keep praying. If your family members don't know the Lord yet, keep praying, keep knocking, keep asking. Because in this season, he is pouring out the opportunity for all to be able to come back to him. So even if they've ignored God their whole lives, even if 
they hate religion, the enmity might be there. Even if those things occur, the Lord is calling back his children because his will is that none should be lost and all should be led to salvation. Hell wasn't a place created for man and woman. It was a place created for Satan and his angels for the judgment that's already been passed. He's just awaiting sentencing for good. Then he'll be tossed in the pit for all eternity. That place wasn't designed for men and women. That was designed for the enemy and his angels. For us, we are called to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and we are called to teach these new believers, these new disciples, to obey all the commands. Think of the commands that Jesus gave. Think about Matthew 5 when he talked about, Blessed are those who thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Think about when the Lord called out to them and says, You've heard it said, an eye for an eye. But I say, love your enemies, pray for your enemies. And he says, you know, turn your other cheek. If someone strikes one cheek, give them the other one too. So Jesus, when he spoke to the disciples, he was giving them a step higher than the law. It was calling more of them. It was demanding more of them. It was posturing their heart to love one another. So the relationship here is critical, but the relationship here affects the relationship here. So if there is no relationship here, it is no surprise that our world is in turmoil and chaos and hatred and battling and division and dissension and anger and hatred and racism all these things exist because the relationship i believe the relationship here is so tainted we've pulled ourselves away from god we've kicked them out of the schools we've kicked them out of our homes we've kicked them out of our businesses we've kicked them out of society and look what happens so here we are with a fall a, f a fading relationship here has caused a fading relationship here so when jesus spoke he said, I give you a new commandment, love one another. So he called on us to love one another and to bless those who persecute you, bless those who curse you, pray, pray for those that have a uh, grievance against you. And in doing so, you truly show and display that you are children of God. Now, making disciples is the focus. So some, when they saw him, some believed they worshiped him, but some doubted. To this very day, this is the contrast for what's happening in society. Some people believe, some people doubt. Wherever people are in their, their walk, that's okay. Love them where they're at, but through making disciples, the church doesn't have the ability to do it on its own because the church is just a building. But the church, the people, the people that Jesus had called the ecclesia, the, those those very believers, anywhere the two or three are gathered, there he'll be in the midst. It's when he walked with them and talked with them. He ate fish with them. He sat on the shorelines with them. He spoke to them. Yes, he spoke to the multitude, but he also pulled in the believers that were his disciples. And even more so, he pulled in the three, Peter, James, and John. They really came close with him. So when he went off to pray into the wilderness, they he took them with him. He took him away. He said, hey, come hang out with me over here. And they watched him. They watched how he acted. They watched how he prayed. They watched how he talked to his heavenly father. They watched how he had compassion when he healed. They watched him preaching, teaching, and healing. So as a result, after three and a half years of watching him preaching, teaching, and healing, they went forth. And they were preaching, teaching, and healing. And all of Christianity was based on 11 disciples where some believed and some doubted. But all of them were martyred for their faith in the Lord because the move of God came and when the move of God came it released over the believers so we are called to make disciples this week we are going to focus on making disciples and what that means how that shows up and the effect and impact that it will have on our society remember 11 people started this move of God one person truly the Mashiach Yeshua started the true move so, Father God, we just praise you, we glorify you, we lift you up. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we just pray that you open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our souls. Teach us to love one another and send us forth, Lord, to make disciples. Lord, we just trust in you, we glorify you, we lift you up. Jehovah Shalom, we release your perfect peace over your children. Jehovah Nisi, we release the victory. Lord, we are operating from victory, not to it. Because when you said to tell us die on the cross, the debt was already paid. The authority 
all authority was already given. And when you that authority was given to you, you passed it on to us so we can go and do likewise. So it's in Jesus' name. We just pray, Lord, as we lift you up, we exalt you, we glorify you for who you are. But Lord, we rejoice in who we are as your sons and your daughters because it's nothing that we've done, but it's because you love the world so much, Father God, that you gave your one and only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So it's in Jesus' name, Lord. We just thank you. We just thank you. We just gird your children in the whole armor of God. And we walk out our lives with the gospel, the preparation of peace, and we share that. And then we continue to walk with those new disciples, those new believers, so we can imitate you, Lord. So we could walk like you, talk like you, speak like you, heal like you, have compassion like you. And that will be contagious and others will do likewise. So Lord, pour out your spirit today in a mighty and special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the two things that we know for certain, and that is Jesus loves you, Clarence loves you, you can't do anything about either, so go ahead and get used to it. Today, I encourage you to start praying for other believers that God has put in your path, praying for other people that may not be believers yet, that you feel that God is drawing you to them in a relationship so you can lead them back to him in a relationship. And this is why the Messiah came and walked this planet. This is why the ministry for three and a half years was taking the disciples and showing them the how-tos and why he did it and the compassion that was involved so they can go and do likewise. And today, I pray for you that you go and do likewise. All right? Morning, Emily. Mike Simple. Cliff. Love you guys. God bless.